we're live, we're here, we're ready to do stuff. Hopefully everything is correct. Clapping for the start of the stream. Okay. Heart Infinity. I like that. Uh, there's a ton of people in the chat. We are here again. We are going to continue the build of our Franken Bear. Uh, Red Bear 24. We've called it half a dozen different things. But today, pretty sure we're going to get everything tied up. There will be no more physical building left to build after this stream today. In fact, I'm going to call the shot and say we'll even get to a little bit of firmware stuff by the end of the day. That's, that's a very lofty goal, but uh, we'll work on it together. Uh, my co-host is here with me. I'll bring her in now. Uh, clapping for the bringing in of co-host. Hello. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. All right, here we go. Greg's here, Jose's here, Bob's here, Jerry's here. Andrew Rogers is already throwing money at us for coffee. Thanks, Andrew. Sergio's here. Uh, Jeremy Lucas is here. Like Fancy's here. The gang is all here. Yeah, we're ready to do this. Okay, so step one. Look, let's get some framing down here. Uh, there was something I was going to do before. Oh, let's do it. For even more bougie coffee. Uh, all right. Awesome. There's something up with the volume on my, on my setup here. This TV used to be much louder. I don't know what happened. Anyway, uh, the t it was the absolute possible, cheapest possible TV that I could find. I think it was less than $100. So that's probably what happened. And it has been down here for... I don't know, years now doing this very thing. Uh, so the bear build. Prusa bear is an aluminum extrusion frame. You take a Prusa kit, kind of started with the Mark II. It went on with the Mark III. Greg is in the chat. He is the, the creator of the Prusa bear upgrade. Basically, straightforward, it is an extrusion upgrade for your Prusa kit. Traditionally, the Prusa kit starting in Mark II was smooth rods, threaded rods, a flat frame that you put together. Um, the extrusion frame was a huge upgrade for that design, much easier to build. Uh, now, Mark III does have extrusion. They use 3030. It's a little different. But still, the bare frame is going to be more stable than that frame even. So it is a very nice upgrade. But basically, it's a frame, up, frame upgrade. There are other bare projects, like we have the bare extruder here. There are a few other bare things. But it was ma mainly made to take a Prusa kit and put it on this frame. I just happen to have one of these frames. So this year we have decided to put together this machine. And if you don't, if you're not like for like on a Prusa bear, we call that a Franken bear. Uh, and that's basically what this is. So it's a lot Prusa. Um, we do have the bear struder. We've got powder-coated smooth rods, we've got powder-coated Z-screws. It's just all the stuff that I could find around the shop to throw this together. It will be powered by an SKR board, SKR3. Not the EZ version, by the way, it's the regular version. I didn't think we needed to get too fancy with it. And I made a lot of custom parts for, you know, that, and there's, it's going to have a custom configuration. We did the bed a bit different. It's setting on silicone spacers. So we added a few nice things here and there, but I think with, with that recap, I think the hardware for everything will be done today, I hope. So yeah, that's it. All right, here we go. Yeah. Um, I did do a couple of things while you were away, but nothing critical. Uh, I did forget, those of you following along at home, I did forget to put together a filament sensor wire. I did not have that included, so I made us one of those the other day. Um, it's not a big deal. It's just a, it's three wires going down to a JST connector. But on the, if you get an aftermarket Mark 42 bed, you will notice that they don't have sheet alignment pins by default. What's wrong with this camera? What happened, Cam Link? You don't want to work anymore? I don't blame you. Oh, now it's working. So you don't get 
alignment pins <laughs> on these aftermarket beds. And what I'm talking about are those pins right there. Now, if you get a Prusa machine, they're just threaded rods basically, but um, they're, they're flat on the back. They just have a little post. Uh, I just use M3 by six millimeter screws and I use this crazy all weather adhesive that really works good for it. And I can't find it right now, of course, here it is. Uh, this stuff works awesome on these beds and it's high heat. So I've never had one of these come undone after I glue them. So I did glue those posts in place while we were uh, over this two weeks. And I was thinking there was one other thing that I did. But if it was, it wasn't important. I was missing a few printed parts last time that we were, we were doing this. All of those have been printed. And so now we'll jump straight in. I got to make some power wires to actually power up the board. So to run from the PSU, we'll hang the electronics enclosure. We'll fix the LCD. Uh, then we'll wire it up and we'll be pretty much done. So that's the agenda for today. We're, you're all caught up. Um, you're as good as you, you know, as much as I do at this point. All right. George would like you to um, make a list of all the parts that you've used, and he wants a copy of it. I would love that as well. <laughs> um, I have a pretty complete list. Honestly, I do from the last one, but I don't think it would take that much for me to get a complete list for this one. I can, I, there's a few odds and ends that I did differently. I will see what I can do about that. Yeah, George wants a copy. All right, we'll, we'll do our best. Uh, where do I want to start here? Probably making some wires. Alrighty. So how's everybody doing? How's the weather? Where you are? We like to talk about weather early on. I, I prefer to get the weather conversation going right away. Uh, it's really nice here today. It's going to be like 68 and a beautiful sunny day. So maybe a little windy, but not, uh, not terrible. And last night was gorgeous. Uh, if you plan to run Marlin, you can save some time and run my Prusa AIO Bear firmware. It supports the SKR3 out of the box. Oh, um, Keith is here. Nice. Yeah. Keith, thank you. That would save a ton of time. Yeah. Now, here's the thing. <laughs> I would love, me personally, that sounds like an amazing idea. I would love to do that right now. But <laughs> that really doesn't help people that would have to build their own firmware. So now I'm kind of torn. Should I take the easy way out and Keith has already done the hard work or should we build it together? Well, Keith, do you have enough for the whole class? Because if you don't, then we're not gonna, we're not gonna do it. Downloads are free. You gotta have gum for everybody, not just you. But I should be special. <laughs> so I don't know, we'll... Maybe we'll hit the highlights on the firmware build and then I'll just use Keith. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, uh, Gregor says on the bear GitHub, there's a, uh, there's a Google sheet with all the parts. Oh, awesome. Chris made it in the past actually. Yeah. No, but, but, but I mean, parts to this specific machine to right. the Franken bear, but yep. yeah, that would be a, probably a good place to start anyway. That's probably the same sheet that I'm thinking of. Cause we yeah. did, we did an extensive and some, I, I can't, I, maybe it was 3d Gusner. Baldy helped me. I can't, I'm sorry that I can't remember who that was, but somebody even helped me fill in the European locations to get the parts. Oh, I remember you doing that. Yeah. That was really nice. It was, uh, I remember that. It was quite the difficult task. Yeah. But... <clears throat> uh, there you go. Uh, thanks, Gregor. Uh, be about 40, 40 degrees where George lives. Yeah, Clear in 70 in Georgia. That's all right. It was 3D Gusner. Thanks, Greg. Yeah, yeah I uh, couldn't remember. I still bother Gusner uh, occasionally. Uh, maybe every two weeks or so mm. <laughs> about something or another. Uh, he's just an all-around good guy. Yeah. I would prefer a custom list of what I need to build my orange bear. <laughs> That's Mike Fancy. Yeah. Uh, I'll list a all of the colors list just for you. Uh, somebody was saying that you could get all of the part, like somebody, like, I think you have to give them AliExpress or something, 
But you know, all the black anodized parts, the screws, the elbows, all that stuff, somebody was making those to match the frame colors. So you could do like all one color, right? even the brackets. I haven't found those yet, but I heard that that was a thing. Right. You, can, you can get anything on AliExpress. Blue skies and 55 in the UK. That's nice. I don't know. Is it rainy? There hobbies with uh, newbie. Is it rainy in that area right now? In early spring. Uh, it was great yesterday. I mowed for the first time. Uh, first mow of the season. A little early for me. I usually don't get out and mow until at least April. But uh, but it's been just so nice here and the rain and perfect combination of rain and sun. And now I got six inches of grass. You know, so what are you gonna do? I got out and mowed yesterday. It wasn't a bad mow, though. You know, it's still dry enough that I just cut right through it. But so nothing was holding me up. But got mowed yesterday. Not looking forward to starting that. Mm. There's one thing that I absolutely love about mowing season, and that's the fact that I don't have to mow. No, I do the mowing. I like that. And I appreciate it. Yeah, I don't mind. Your paycheck will reflect accordingly. Thank you. I don't mind doing the mowing. I put my earbuds in and listen to my music or whatever ridiculous true crime podcast I'm listening to or TV show or whatever, and then I just get it done. It doesn't take very long anyway. We got a nice flat yard. No big deal. And I got a nice fancy mower. <laughs> with uh good good uh what's the uh self propel self propel yes yeah. helps me up the hills it's raining in denmark so we went it, to the zoo for a walk in the rain lars isn't there a joke in there somewhere it's raining in denmark is it, rain, is it i don't know you know, something I didn't think about while this build, which we're going to definitely have to investigate. We don't have to do it right away. But this power supply has power loss recovery. I forgot about that part of the Prusa firmware. We could totally make that work in Marlin, but I'm going to have to figure out some of the configuration, how that works. Yeah. I've been using my CR10 Mini since 2018. It's been running strong with all the mods I've done to it with many YouTube videos. Good. Awesome. I'm glad. Mike, it, it, where Mike lives, it's 47. Sunny and 47 in the backyard. That's okay. It's like, you know, 47 ain't bad as long as the wind ain't blow. You know, as long as the wind's not blowing, it's not terrible. Brisk. And you know what? For some reason, 47 in the fall feels entirely different than 47 in the spring, in my opinion. But maybe that's just... Just because you're hopeful. Hopeful <laughs> of warm weather. It's a sign of warm weather to come. That's probably what a raining buckets in Portugal. Uh. Eh. Monsoon season. I don't know. Is it, it could be monsoon season, actually. As a matter of fact. Uh... I know you could grow monsoons. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, uh. 47 is shorts in Chris's basement t-shirt weather. <laughs> you guys in your year-round shorts. Forget it. Uh, SKR. Busy getting all my Rocky Mountain prints in order. There you go. Coming up. My suitcase. That'll be fun. TSA loves a suitcase full of 3D prints. Ask me how I know. Yeah. All righty. Yeah, so it's been real nice here lately. Tomorrow we're going to get some thunderstorms in the morning for Easter Sunday. And then it'll... Wouldn't say it'll clear up. It's supposed to stop raining, but I think it's going to be cloudy all day. But it's going to be almost 80 degrees. Like 77 is the high tomorrow. It's going to be crazy. Warm. So we may just have to sit outside in the clouds. That's when you get your best sunburn. Yeah. Andrew State, yes, that's true. 
Andrew says it's mostly chess pieces and stuff in his suitcase, so not suit. Maybe it'll be okay. But they could be explosives. Yes. TS is going to TS this A. Yeah, that's right. Keep your infill down so you don't go over the weight limit. Right? <laughs> keep, your, keep your infill low. Keep your infill low. <laughs> Good advice. Oh, fix some dude is here. Fix some dude. I need to. Joel Telling started that whole fix some dude holler thing. I need to record, like, go steal one from one of the videos and put it on one of the buttons. Oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> I'm sure Joel, he would love that. Joel does it way better than I could ever do it. But... What is the fix some dude's name? Mike. Mike. Thank you. Oh, and I see him right here. Mike, I have it written down and I didn't see it. Uh, I'm sure Mike would love that. If you announced his presence every time he come into the chat. Well, maybe not. Mike kind of seems like the modest type of guy. Yeah, maybe that's he, what I was thinking. Maybe he doesn't that... like it when Mike I would not really uh, love it. Uh, <laughs> announce him all the time. But I'd do it anyway. Well, it's out of love. That's right. Yes. 67 in Baltimore. Ooh, that sounds all right. What's spring like in... He's not exactly in Baltimore, though. You're in Delaware, aren't you, Mike, uh, Sergio? Uh, but still. Uh, Close enough. I don't know what it's like there. Probably about the same. A little drier, I think, up there. Maybe. I don't know, actually. I have no idea. Maybe it's pretty close to the same. It's, it's pretty close to here, I would guess. But... Andrew Rogers says, you know you've made it when you got a special audio trigger on the basement. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You're somebody. <laughs> He's like the Mike. Uh, Mike says he's like the most humble person on the planet. <laughs> he's just outside of DC. So, yeah. is it a uh, humid, dry? What's going on there, Sergio? Well, they're fairly close to the water. Yeah, I, yeah. I honestly don't know what it's like there. I don't know much about the northwest or northeast. Hello, William. Parts, parts, parts. I threw them in here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Anybody see those parts? It's just a protective cover to keep your hands away from the electricity. We don't actually need it. Uh, fix a mic says that would be hilarious. I would be honored. So maybe <laughs> now we do need to make a button for him. All right, write it down. Or we can just announce him verbally. Well, we have to do both. Would Joel uh, allow us to use his voice on our stream? Sure. I don't but know. I, I know that he would, because he wouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> like he's watching. <laughs> well, he might be. I, I have had him, uh, like... Has like he his, popped in before? You start talking about him, and then all of a sudden he's there. <laughs> so, he rises whoops. up out of the floor. <laughs> I, I I would never say anything bad about Joel Tilling because you he's rang. one of the nicest people in the whole world. I don't know what I could say bad about him, but you know, you talk about people like they're not there and then they are. It's always kind of awkward. Then they show up. Yes. Okay. Oh, here we have a reddish sky because we have dust coming from the Sahara. Whoa. That's interesting. I uh I've heard tell of that. I yeah, yeah. I think that's all the wires we need. Honestly, I can't imagine what else we would have to build. Didn't we have something last year? Like there was a we, volcano or something, and we were we did, but we I were, can't remember the cause. Well, there were wildfires in Canada or some kind of yeah. I can't last remember year, all the details. And we were getting that from. I think we were getting something from Canada last year. I don't remember how that worked. Yeah. But yes, it, there was a red tint to everything. Mm -hmm. Ooh, this is the year for us, gang. This is the year for the cicada. And I believe that cicada is a brood. Is that correct? Is a what? A brood. Like a brood of cicada. I, I don't I'm know. I'm going to look it up. Look it up. Group of... How do you spell cicada? <laughs> it's called a nightmare. <laughs> Yeah, cicada. Good luck. Bro broods. B r o o d s. A brood. Uh, anyway, this is the year for uh, two broods of cicada. Normally, we only have one, 
but two broods of cicada, major broods are coming this year. It's the 17 year cicada and the 13 year cicada. The apocalypse is coming to the Midwest, folks. Be I, ready. My, and, my fans sure blame Canada. <laughs> is that what he said? <laughs> you guys are so nice. We pin everything on you. You know. Uh, anyway, though, uh, yeah, blame Canada. Uh, we always do, Mike. <laughs> Why does Elton John not like? Iceberg lettuce because he is more of a rocket man. Uh -huh. Cute. Um. Anyway, though, we're gonna have two broods of cicada this year, so we're gonna, it's gonna be cicada crazy. Uh, and then I think on top of our regular. Now Missouri does not get it as like Indiana, Illinois. So when we're at Murph, you're gonna you're gonna see some of that Probably if you guys are coming to Murph. Really and you don't, loud. Um. Yes, it's going to be very loud, and there's going to be lots of large flying insects buzzing around the trees and stuff. Um, Nothing's quite as humbling as getting a cicada to the face. Just, you know. <laughs> that they're, hurts. They're like the size of a mouse. I mean. Painful. <laughs> yeah, they're good size. Uh, yeah, it's going to be very noisy, and, uh, uh, <clears throat> and you're going to see lots of big flying bugs around. But they are harmless. They don't bite. They're they're all right. They don't they're not gonna hurt you. But uh, it does kind of hurt though if you if you're riding a motorcycle <laughs> into Murph. That probably put your face shield on. Yeah. Whoa. Gonna, don't open your mouth. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a noisy buggy interesting. summer. Yes, I'm. I don't know. It's kind of exciting. And we have the eclipse coming in a week, about a week. That's pretty mm. exciting. I think we're going to have to do some eclipse festivities here around the house. Well, heaven forbid there be any reason for some sort of festivities where... Well, that's an excuse to eat. We could have some snacks. We're going to do snacks. <laughs> um, what does one have for eclipse snacks? Anyway. I don't know. I got, I got about... I got a little over a week to think about it. Mm -hmm. uh, but yes, I think some some snacks are in order. And uh, we'll do something kind of fun. Does anybody have any big plans? Uh, I know Sergio and those guys in the Northeast are going to be able to get a good view of it. We're going to get like 98 total, 98%. So we're going to get most of the eclipse. Uh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> they feed on my nightmares. <laughs> yeah. Glad we don't get the cicada here. You know what? Uh, they got red eyes. Mm -hmm. yeah, they're scary. They're creepy. But again, like I said, they're harmless. They don't. They don't bite or anything. They're just big and scary. Uh, apparently, my area is one of the best places to view the eclipse. I already got one bad eye, so I'll be staying inside all that day. Chris and I both have our... I saved my... We had an eclipse here in, what, like, 18? No. 17, probably? I don't know. Oh my uh, and I saved my eclipse glasses, and I got Chris his eclipse glasses, so we are not in danger of any... You know, don't look directly at the sun. It burns! Yeah. Uh, I came home that one year, that year, and Chris had his uh, his welding <laughs> mask. He was looking. It worked. Too. We got. It's I got off work a little early, and uh, so I got to come home. And I come home, and he's out on the back deck with his welding mask. Hey, anybody that's ever spent time in a welding mask, they know exactly. They can. They can picture exactly what I was doing because you get really used to, you know, shaking your head down while you're holding something. Yeah. It's, it just becomes very convenient at some point. Yeah. So you know, I can walk around the garage and do stuff with it up while I'm waiting for the eclipse to happen. And flip it back down. It just worked. Yes. Role playing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, other people is. It's Aaron said the same thing that he uh, that he used his welding mask. Yeah, it, it'll it'll do. It's fine. It'll do just fine. Yeah, and it worked. And I looked at it, and actually, you can see. Uh, you know, it's better than the glasses. I think. Uh, I mean, it's hot. You yeah, know, you when you're staring wanna... at the sun wearing a welding mask, but you spent a lot of time. It, it was all right. Uh, 
<laughs> it worked out. Yeah, safety first. Um. So yes, we'll, we're going to have to do something for the eclipse. Hopefully you won't have to work the entire time and you can... I think, what did I say? That it was going to start at like 12.58 our time. I'll have to look up all the times. But it, the whole thing start to finish is going to take about two hours or so. So that'll be nice. And I hope the weather's good. Somebody said uh, on here that the weather's... Oh, yeah, in New York, Western New York, it's uh, it's supposed to be... Uh, the weather's supposed to be nice. So that'll be good. Hopefully it's, it'll be nice here too. See if I can get a 10 day here. Let's see for us. Oh, we need eight. 71 and sunny as of now, but that's a week away and we live in Missouri. So no promises. Uh, but that'd be a nice day. Cicadas are coming. There's an eclipse. Somebody says looking at the eclipse with a welding helmet is not a good idea. Why, pray tell? I'm guessing it's probably not the right type of protection. I guess not, but I mean... I didn't die. I'm not blind. Uh, hello? Hi, Tom Llama. Well, let's say this. It's, we'll just call it not a good idea. So... Don't try this at home, kids. There you go. 44 on the Oregon coast, and it's sunny. That's nice. Go outside. Get some vitamin D. 20 minutes in the sun. That's what they say is all the 20 minutes. <laughs> Mike says, Mike, fix some Mike. I'm going to start calling you fix some Mike because mm. we have Mike, Mike Fancy, our other Mike. So fix some Mike says, I heard it beats no welding helmet. <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> I don't know why, but the first thing I thought of was like the, the ending scene to Indiana Jones with the face melting. <laughs> yeah, it beats that. It beats a face melting. Yes. Uh... Yes. So anyway, we'll we'll we got some stuff coming up. We got some celestial and natural events. We got this may be the year, folks. Actually, I mean like eclipse, end of the world, lots of cicada. If anything, it's going to be a noisy summer. I did come upstairs the other day, and you were watching something about Nostradamus. So oh yeah, I figured you were yeah. forecasting. That's something I can watch while I play with my phone. Uh. Yes, 20 minutes of the sun hitting the skin. Yeah, you can't, you got to go out there naked for 20 minutes and get all the vitamin D that you need. I was saying you need 20 minutes to get your vitamin D in the sun and somebody, yes, that's true. On the skin. So if you go out there totally nude for 20 minutes on the back deck, which I'm going to do right after this stream. <laughs> so all the neighbors can see us. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Do that. <laughs> We're accepting donations now, folks. Uh-huh. Chris, does the Eclipse activate automatic darkening welding helmet? <laughs> uh, I don't know. <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> it might not be bright enough to do that. Now that I think about it. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody's end is the world, oh, finally. <laughs> it's about time, huh? Had enough. About time. <laughs> Would you stop talking about it and do it already? No kidding. Uh... Well, right in the path. Oh, Mike is right in the path. Fix some Mike is right in the path of the eclipse. Well, and the other Mike, Mike Fancy is also in the path, just on the other end. Uh, so they are expecting a crazy influx of eclipse tourists in our area. People are renting out their pastures. Ooh, hmm. that's kind of neat. That might be fun. Um, I mean, you know, we'll go out on the deck, but that would be neat anyway. Um uh hot springs arkansas is supposed to get 100 and i guess they are booked uh finally an excuse to go to arkansas right uh upstate new york not in the path well but george you'll get a uh partial i think at least um well, that'll 
not be nice. How to keep the neighbors from wanting to chit chat. Garden in the nude. <laughs> <laughs> you got lots of sunblock. Uh, welding uh, helmet comes in different darknesses and some are light reactive. Unless you know exactly what you're doing, it might not turn out too well for you. Good to know. Yeah, some are auto darkening, and I'm not yeah. sure exactly how that would turn out. Only welding helmets with shade 12 or higher for the eclipse. Good to know. Also, we got little paper glasses now. I'm sure they're I totally bought, safe. I have procured the proper safety uh, equipment for <laughs> yeah. our eclipse. And now I have to get snacks. <laughs> what will I be eating while my retinas are burning? I don't know. <laughs> I haven't decided. Maybe some red hots. That sounds appropriate. Uh, one of those uh, really up. hot jawbreakers. Oh, atomic fireballs. Fireballs. I haven't had atomic one of those in a while. Fireballs. Long time. I used to work with a guy that he like he was obsessed with this thing. <laughs> That'll work. Our local regional government guy has announced a state of emergency for Eclipse Day, mostly due to traffic volumes of visitors. They complained about low tourism for the past few years. Well, you want it, you got it, you right? Got it now. Mike Fancy, you betcha. Uh, there you go. We're still discussing welding helmets used as eclipse wear, and somebody says the auto darkening might not darken fast enough. That is true. So you're probably, I think we have successfully stated the case that welding helmets are not a good alternative. Check to the paper safety glasses, but for all good reasons, these are all very valid reasons. And I believe I've yeah. stated it on YouTube several times. I don't do things because it's the right thing to do. Yes. <laughs> So your your mileage may vary while watching Chris's basement. Yeah, there we go. Somebody says I just use a pinhole projector to view keeps there my eyes safe. I remember using that. We had a eclipse. I think we had a partial eclipse when I was in high school, and we made the pinhole where mm -hmm. you could look at the shadow. That's kind of neat. It was fun. Wasn't that like on Mister Rogers or something? Oh, I'm sure it was. Um, I got clam shooters for tomorrow. I'm going to assume that that's some sort of food. Or or some sort of medical condition? I, what are clam shooters? I'm in. I'm in. Whatever it is, I like it. But what is it? Uh, oh, I should have totally designed this case differently. Because that don't fit on the bed. I'm going to have to rework that part. Yeah. Well, oh, the Andrew Rogers designed a 3D printable version that's available on printables. Ooh. Of a pinhole projector? Uh, yes. Sweet. Yes. We need one of those for our party. Just the two of us. Better than a me party. Yeah. That's cool. Print it out, honey. I'll get um, right on it. Thank you. I'll... I'll... Start now. Hold on, everyone. Stop right where you are. Print, print Andrew's pinhole projector. So my part, my new SKR case does not line up well enough. I tried to make it as close to the Rambo case as I could, but I couldn't, you know, get it exactly. It doesn't line up with the bare part. So, but uh, the whole bare project has fusion files out there that you can edit to your heart's content. So I'll make us a new part for this case, or I'll tweak the case a bit. We'll just see which one I'm able to do. But it does not keep us from moving on. So that's what we're we're just going to keep trucking forward. All righty. All right, do you want to hear what a clam shooter is? Lay it on me. What's a clam shooter? Cherry stone raw clam. Okay. In a shot glass, spoon or hot hot cocktail sauce. Top it with vodka. And it's a clam shooter. Whoa. That, uh, that sounds pretty good. Makes me think of... I would totally do one of those. Makes me think of Clamato juice. It's a New England thing. Ooh. Now, I not... I mean, we... I'll do, I'll do like, oysters. Uh, and we, like, uh, we decided... Chris and I went to a restaurant once, and we did 
West Coast oysters and East Coast oysters. And I myself are, am more partial to the East Coast. The rock, what are those oysters called? The rock oyster something. Yeah. A little larger and a little more. The ones from the West Coast tasted uh, very uh, kind of salty. They tasted more like the sea, I guess. So Pacific, Pacific water, didn't you think? More, a little more salty, kind of, and sea. Yeah. More like the ocean. More, more of a fishy. There's definitely fishy a different taste. And then the ones on the um, from the East Coast tasted. Uh, I don't know, just what I'm used to, I guess. But a little, I mean, and I don't want to, this is going to sound awful, but I don't know any other word. Sort of more clean tasting, more not quite so fishy of the sea. Not, oh. qu not quite so salty, not quite, just a little more savory, I guess, would be a better word. I don't know. It's hard to describe. If uh, I've had them out east and out west. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it, the biggest thing is, well, one, we're in Missouri, so who knows what, what the condition of the oyster is in by the time we get it. Yeah. But uh, the most of the types that you see out east always seem to be so much larger than anything out west. Yes. I, I recall, like, west coast, like, K Kamamoto's. Yeah. That, that's a very common oyster to get out west. Yeah. Uh, I think I said that right. But, yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah, fresh. Fresh. Somebody suggested fresh. Yeah. Hello, John. Suggested fresh. And uh, maybe that's what. But I don't want to imply that the West Coast oysters were not fresh or did not taste good because they were bad or something. It was just different. Different. I mean, because you're talking about warm water and cold water, too. And I think that makes a big difference uh, in everything. Uh, I, I do like oysters, though. And uh, they were talking here about um, horseradish cocktail sauce. Lots of horseradish. I like a spicy horse, uh, spicy cocktail sauce, too. Uh, so that's cool. Mad Max, Mad Zax 5000 says hello. Hello. Ooh. Atlantic is less salty than the Pacific in general, I believe. Probably is. I would believe that. That's, um. I know nothing. Yeah. Uh. Somebody says, I'd like to add your SKR case to my Prusa AIO wiki once you get it working. Okay. This, this is Keith. Keith wants it. Okay. Yep. Yeah. I will, uh... And then, uh, hello, Glenn. Hi, Glenn. In Alabama, we were discussing the uh, eclipse. You get a partial, I think. And you get a partial. And you get a partial. You get a partial, I think, in Alabama for the eclipse. Worcestershire sauce. Never had it with oysters. I I'd get to try, but I'm pretty partial to my either cocktail sauce or just to squeeze a lemon. Um, you know, depends on the mood. Uh, we you can get them here in Missouri at some of the nicer restaurants. I wouldn't trust. I wouldn't trust them just you know at some, you know, Texas Roadhouse or anything. But oh. some of the nicer restaurants around here. Uh, get fish flown in daily, and I think that that's uh. But we get you can get them here. Uh, Rockefeller, we get them. That's pretty common around here. The Rockefeller, which is good, and it's kind of fun and festive. There we go with uh, festive again. Festive. Atlantic is less okay. That's what. Uh, sorry, I already read that one. Uh. Sergio likes both oysters and clams. Around here, they have very many good choices. Yes, I love clams. Clam. Um, the uh, Tom Lama says we get fish out of the ocean daily around here. What's the fish, Tom and Sergio, East Coast people? What's the fish over there? Connecticut, they probably get whatever. So here we do a lot of trout. That's our local fish, bass, freshwater fish around here. I don't know if you guys get trout. Uh, Glenn was thinking about driving closer to the totality zone, but he may have to work. I, think you, I mean, well, it'd be a little ways for you. I mean, I think you'd at least have to get to Texas, unless you wanted to go north, rockfish. 
Rockfish. Never had rockfish. What else do you we, we eat? A, like at the restaurants, what do you eat? Tilapia. You see a lot salmon, of tilapia. Sometimes you see halibut. Halibut, halibut. Yeah, that's one. Yellowfin tuna, but that's like sushi. Lobster caught lobster. Yeah. Mm. Bluegill. Now that's you the uh, that's what you eat at the fish fry when you go to somebody's house. <laughs> Crappie. Crappie Crap. and bluegill. Yes. Blue walleye. Gill. Andrew likes walleye. Andrew Rogers. Blue crabs. Yeah. Yeah. We did that. That's a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> For very little reward. So. I just uh, remembered that this board only has one DC input. So I'm going to have to like splice those or doesn't really matter, but uh, two would be nice. Uh, bluefish is big around here. Bluefish. We're going to have to go out there and, and have some. I catch frozen haddock from my freezer <laughs> from Costco. That's Mike fancy. That's kind of how we do it around here. Like if you're getting if you're getting like fish and chips, a lot of times it's cod. But that's like frozen fish. Yeah. Fresh fish here, though, is bass and trout. That's big. Trout fishing is fun around here. Paddock and milk. Hmm. Uh, there you go. Crayf uh, crawfish. Yeah. Yeah. You pinch the little heads off. Hmm. Not my, not my favorite thing to do. Uh, seafood in general has gotten so expensive. Seafood used to be the poor man's food. Not anymore. Where's the electrical tape? Every once in a while, I will get a lobster tail from the grocery store and stress, <clears throat> make Chris cook it. And it stresses him out because it's expensive and you don't want to overcook it. So, but it's so good. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's like you have to cut the puffer fish just right or you're poison yourself. Yes. You know, it's kind of one of those scenarios. Yes. Yeah, I, tilapia is huge in LA. It's like an aquarium fish. Um, it it is. I think they're easy to raise. Yeah, they're. Um, they I just think carp. that's the. Yeah, they're they're easy to raise. Yeah, so you can get a whole lot. I mean, bass too. They have these, not bass. Excuse me. Uh, salmon hatcheries. You guys all know about that. With these huge hatcheries of just cranking out salmon, and same thing. Uh, bass around here too. They have hatcheries here that just we just crank out the bass. Uh, here, local catfish is probably as popular as anything else. I yeah, would guess. catfish. Yeah, we like. Yeah, so, and some people. I mean, some people really love it. A lot of people just say you can't eat it. I mean, it's just if you're willing to uh, forego the thought of what the catfish has been eating. Eh. But tilapia is the same way. I mean, yeah, I like fried catfish. Yeah, and you know, like. Yeah, pretty much anything fried, though, is fine with me. Uh, Keith wants to know, did you swap 24-volt van fans, or are you running the DC mode? Uh, I couldn't I couldn't get a hold of one of those mods. It's a great question, and we talked about it on one of the streams, by the way. But that's something that people need to know. Uh, Prusa kits will have 5-volt fans. I could not get a hold of that DC mode module for the SKR3. So just to play it safe, I switched everything to 24 volt. I just used 24 volt fans, so I didn't have to worry about that. It'll be quite a bit noisier, but you know, you'll know you'll have enough cooling. Uh, but yes, I'm just running it straight out 24 because I didn't want to mess with finding one of those uh, converter things. Do you feel like catfish or carp tastes muddy or earthy? <laughs> yeah, they yeah, both. It's do. an earthy yeah. taste. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but if you roll it around in cornmeal and deep fry it. And add some... Put ranch on it. Put ranch on it. <laughs> well, I was going to say tartar sauce, but yes. <laughs> then it ranch. doesn't taste as muddy. <laughs> then it doesn't taste so earthy. Um, Have a few beers, it'll be fine. Only play, uh, the only way I've eaten catfish is deep fried, man. And you can't taste anything after that. I don't think I've ever had catfish other than deep fried. Yeah, do you fry that. It's, yeah. yeah. Uh, skate fish. Uh, it's very white and tender. Like a flaky... I've heard of people eating skate. I don't know that I've ever had it. Mike Fancy says he lives between two of the Great Lakes, and I don't see local fish advertised too often. Not much commercial fishing, I guess. Uh, 
Oh, somebody said carp is something we don't know. I don't I don't think I've ever had carp. Yeah. It... I I knew some folks growing up, you know, that would go catch carp and try to eat it, but I don't think I'd want to try to eat it. I don't think it's a it. very good fish. They're fun to catch though. They're monsters. Oh, so they'll jump right in your boat. Yeah. So there's carp in the Missouri River, and they're not supposed to be there, by the way. They were... They're... Yeah, and you're talking about Asian carp. Yeah, they're incredibly invasive. Yeah. Some, some ding-ding put a carp in the Missouri River, and now they've taken over. But what you do, they react to the sound of the motor on your boat, or you can kind of bang on the helm of your boat. And it'll get all those carp all stirred up, and they will literally jump out of the water. And some will jump right into your boat. And they are every bit, they're big, like 20 pounds, aren't they? Something oh, quite large. Yeah, more, you, you'll see them that are like four foot. I mean, yeah, they're, they're very large. And um, it's, it's crazy. I've never seen anything like it. But uh, you can look it up on YouTube of a carp. And, well, they like kill people from knocking them into the water yeah they can <laughs> tip your boat over it, it's something else uh people actually eat carp not really well uh they try fix some kid i got fix some dude and i have a fix some kid no relation i don't know <laughs> back to us uh Andrew Rogers says, I mentioned it earlier, but harpoon caught swordfish is miles beyond line caught. My favorite fish, but hard to get. Oh, bad. Yeah. That reminds mm. me of, you ever seen the movie Suicide Kings? And I know I've forced you to watch it, where Dennis Leary is the killer, but he's, you know, he's really complaining. You know, he's, you know, he's Dennis Leary, so he's constantly yes, going into yes. rants. That always, anytime somebody says, like, like harpooning or catching fish that way. I always think of that because he, he had stingray boots, and he's like, "Why don't you know? Why don't you get crocodile or you know or you know eel?" What? He's like, "Because that's too easy. Uh -huh. Stingray, you got to get a boat. You got to get a guy to <laughs> to kill it. You know, he goes on one of these rants." But yeah. uh, that's that's what I always think of when somebody. Yeah. Um. Mike Fancy says, when I was a kid, I fished a lot for bass, salmon, trout, pike, etc., and there were always a few ex-Brits there fishing for carp. It was a science for them. Yeah. That's funny. Uh, my grandfather used carp for the garden, and he would bury them there. That'll do. That's a good idea. Um, Andrew Rogers. Oh, whoops. He's responding to somebody. Don't read that one. Fix some kid is an amazing kid. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say that they are. Related. I'm gonna take a stab in the dark here. All right then. And say that they're related. <laughs> in Greece, I was eating fresh squid just caught on one side to open it up and simply grilled it with a bit of olive oil. Very simple, but so good when it was really fresh and well cooked. Oh, I'll bet. Um. Yeah. Mm. So cool. Hello. Hello, Edmar. How are you? I hope I'm saying that correctly. Um, good morning, good afternoon. Uh, yeah, fishing. We don't really fish. Not a fisherman, fisher person. Yeah. Uh, it's okay once in a while. Yeah. It's no 3D printing, but I guess it'll do. Oh, well, here you go. Uh, somebody suggested, like, not letting the fish eat for a week, and then it wouldn't taste so earthy. I could see that. Um, let's see. Where are we at now? Uh, waiting MMU3 for MMU, MMU MK4, original buffer or RMU. What do you think? Say what? Waiting... They're it, waiting for their Mark for MMU three. Original buffer or RMU question mark. The toughie. I I do really like the new buffer. I think it works pretty well, and for the Mark four, things are going to be just a little bit different. I think, but that RMU is super convenient. 
Um, so the the stock buffer will be just fine. Don't 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 fear it like the original buffer. The original buffer was not good. Um, it's much better now. So that's the cheap version because the RMU does cost some money. Uh, you have to give those guys some bucks for developing that. Uh, the the stock buffer isn't bad, but I'm gonna say the RMU is just still more convenient, just based on how they mount it and and all of that. So. I prefer RMU still, but the Prusa one's not bad. You'll be fine. There you go. Uh, Sergio says flounder. Have you ever had flounder? Yes, I have. It's good. A lot of people won't eat them because they are bottom feeders. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, huge fan of your channel. Big supporter of pushing the limits of of printing. And thank you for helping me install Clipper Life Changer. Ha ha ha. Awesome. Good. Yay. Um, white urchin shells. Uh, white urchin. That sounds interesting. It's a shellfish? Hmm. Uh, Tree Tolber says, my XL finally shipped. Ten months. I pre-ordered it. Wow. Ten months? <laughs> no. Not to, right. knock, not to knock the guys at Prusa, but 10 months sounds pretty fast. <laughs> I, I'm, not, I'm not saying anything. It just it took a long time to get those shipped. Mike Fancy says, I am eager to install an RMU on my MK4 slash MMU3, mostly for space-saving reasons and mounting filament overhead. Agreed. I'm, I'm with you, Very Mike. Good. That's, uh, it's, it's a good design. They did a good job on it. Oof. It's not too bad down here. I thought it'd be a little. It's a little chilly, but not not too bad down in the basement. What are we looking? At? Uh, sixty-eight degrees. That's about normal for the basement. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's not complaining. <laughs> Three says, "Yeah, I'm not complaining." <laughs> uh, good. Uh, I have the new RMU bracket for the MK4 slash MMU3 printed and waiting. All right. Mike's ready. He is. If you have to change up, like, that's the biggest problem out of the box. Like, for Prusa, you know, they can't go into some elaborate scheme like, you should hang your filament on the wall and you should do this. They have to provide some sort of something for you to use as a spool holder. So they give you this panorama now of, of these spool holders, these just these skates, and you have to find a place to put it. If you're really serious about the MMU, there's no way that you could use the stock stuff that they get you, unless you just have like unlimited amounts of room at your house. I mean, I don't. There's no place for me to put five spools and a printer and you know do all this stuff. So you have to put it on the wall. I mean, there's you have to go up. There's just really no way around it. And the RMU makes that much easier to go vertical. Yeah. Uh, so you would have to buy the RMU and the MMU3? Uh, the RMU is made by... Um, <laughs> I can't remember. It, there, it's made by another company, and I can't remember their name right off the top of my head. Uh, but no, it's a, it's a completely aftermarket add-on. The, the MMU3 comes with a buffer and spool holders that you can use, and they're fine. They work okay. The RMU is an add-on. Uh, that just, ma to, in my opinion, makes, it replaces the buffer and makes things a lot more compact and easier to use. Good. Wedge Group. The Wedge Group makes the RMU. Yes. Uh, what firmware? Marlin, right? You're going to use Marlin? We're going to start, yeah, we're going to start Marlin, and I want to do, I'm going to use this as an excuse to do all the fancy new features that Marlin has in it. So we'll, and we'll go over all that and how it works. Yeah. But then we can switch to whatever we want. But. Yeah. Um, let's see. Nitrum is here. Hello and happy Easter. Hello and happy Easter. Uh, fix em, dude. Fix em, Mike uses a wall mounted wire rack. You're right. The stock setup takes up an enormous amount of real estate. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Hobbies with newbie. I went, I went the classic lack table enclosure with holes in the back of my, for my MMU. There you, there go. you go. Um, Mike Fancy uh, posted a link. Filament buffer. Yes. Thanks, Mike. 
that wedge group, those guys are they're good people too. They a, a lot of people want to say, and I I get it. I get what people are talking about. They we ha this is a very open source community, and we share everything. And there's a lot of ideas out there. And then when somebody charges for something that's 3D printed and is a lot like some of the designs that people are giving away for free out there on Thingiverse or printables or whatever, it, it's it can be aggravating to to look at it. You know, like I, why am I paying for this? But you know, uh, there's a time and a place, I guess. You know, I mean the they they do good work. It, it's it's a good design. It works. Uh, it's not outrageously expensive. So definitely something to look into. Rather than I'm sure there's some awesome open source free options out there. But uh, I was pretty impressed with that one, the RMU. Uh. <clears throat> Let's see here. Um, Mike Fancy says the RMU folks have lowered the price. Oh, good. Uh, somebody said, oh, yeah. I would love to see some testing of Ulindel. Ulindu. Ulindu. U-L-E-N-D-O. Gregor says so. Gregor. You know this firmware? Is it firmware? No. I don't. I don't, I don't mm -hmm. know that right off the top of my head, Greg. Look it up. I mean, send me some info. Yeah. I'd, I'd be glad to test whatever. I'm always interested in that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, Maybe I do know it and just don't remember. Glenn Hogue says if he wants to watch uh, four hours away, four hour drive for 90 seconds of totality, <laughs> is it worth it? How many eclipses have you seen, Glenn? I remember this will be my third eclipse. A partial when I was in high school and then two totals. This will be my second total. And then, so far. Glenn's a driving kind of guy, though. The, yeah, you've probably been all over. He's, so, he four might hour be at a, drive probably ain't nothing to He you. might be at a customer that day that uh, yeah, had a better I mean, view. You just, never know. Yeah, exactly. Make an excuse to get paid to drive out there. There you go. Uh, the RMU folks have lowered the price. I already said that. Uh, and that he would gladly pay for things to save time. Absolutely. There you go. Uh, let's see. Oh, here somebody says, uh, Key says, uh, it's a uh, fancier input shaping implementation in Marlin. Yeah. Oh, that's what that Lindu is. Okay, cool. Well, we'll look into it, Keith. Yeah. Thanks, Keith. Uh, we'll look into it. I'm old well, I say we. That. He'll look into it. She'll. I will, Look at me while I'm looking into I'll it. I'll supervise his looking into things. Uh, there we go. He says, uh, it, Gregor says, uh, fixed time motion to replace input shaping. It does compensate the motion instead of filtering like input shaping. Cool. Yeah. Theoretically, no rounded edges. Now I'm interested. Hmm. I keep picking up other people's basket cases and dumping money into the printers. How do I stop? <laughs> I can't. I'm sorry. There's no cure for what you have. Uh, I should. I Just should, say no. I should start a group where, where we have to go to meetings. <laughs> and I'm a, I'm a 3D printing addict. Okay. Hi, Kelvin. <laughs> um. Ooh, there's a white dwarf that is supposed to go Nova this year and will apparently outshine the North Star. I would be interested to see something like that. That's the... I like celestial type. Do you remember when we could see uh, Jupiter real good? Yeah, you could actually kind of... A couple of, years ago, yeah. there was some... I like that kind of stuff. We watched it line up. That was really neat. I mean, that kind of stuff is cool. It's pretty cool, you know, if I'm not sleepy. Well, it just, it's a reminder. <laughs> well, that's true. If it's not at 4 a.m., it's really cool. If it's at 11 o'clock after a couple glasses of wine, it's fascinating. It's fascinating. Anyway, uh. This is the but... greatest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> this is so cool. Uh, anyway, uh. I don't know. Just to remind you, though, how small you are, you know. Uh. Should we talk about Ghostbusters? 
Or, was, or yeah. are there too many spoilers? Or should we just talk about it in general? It was good. I got a popcorn bucket. And I ate caramel M&Ms. Yeah, yeah. Uh, about somebody's getting a car. Um, there are a few pending PRs to fix up the Ulindu code. Uh, so look for some improvements in 2.1.3. Awesome. Uh, let's see here. Let me know if you find a cure. Pick some dudes. Talk. Yeah, the cure mm -hmm. for picking up sad and lonely printers and making them new again. Good luck. Uh, oh, Andrew's going to see Ghostbusters tonight. Let us know what you think, Andrew. Get the popcorn bucket. Uh, now we got the uh, we got the uh B and B theaters version, which is still good. Uh, Andrew is a well. Regal or AMC, I don't remember. You told me what theater you guys go to, but they and they have the actual trap where it looks like a ghost trap popcorn bucket. And my friend Becky went to AMC and got the ghost trap bucket. And the drinks are the little stay puffed marshmallow in the shape you get a drink, stay puffed marshmallow drink thing. Yeah, no spoilers. I'm, I'm not. I'm, we don't need to talk about the movie. It was good. We liked it. Funny parts. Mm -hmm. There you go. Mm -hmm. All right. So, if you're building a bear kit and you're going to use an SKR board, like if you're using Prusa stuff, there are companies that sell these things, and these save you tons of time. But they take those Molex connectors and convert them to JSTs. So that's what we're going to be using. They're like five bucks, uh, but. Now I don't have to cut all these ends off. I can just put these on here and away we go. So if you're going to do this with an SKR board, look into these things. Excellent. Uh, yeah, Andrew's AMC. Yeah, they, they should. I think they have the good one there. If it's, hopefully they would have, still have some. Um, Somebody said, spoiler alert, ghosts will be busted. <laughs> that is true. There is some ghost busting. And busting makes me feel good. Yeah, me too. Uh, I just completed my bear clone, but only have the NKS Robin Nano with TFT available. But will it still be able to follow the Marlin setup? Uh, yeah, you don't have to have a screen at all uh, if you don't want. Uh, just completed by Bear Clone. Only have the Robin Nano with TFT available. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it'll be fine. Just, uh, you, if you're worried, the, the board's fine. If you're worried about the screen, you don't even need a screen if you don't want one. With Marlin, you could run it any way you want. So, you'll be fine. It, it'll work. You just you have to do a couple things a little differently, but you got this. All right, so how is the best way for me to show you? Um, this really isn't super interesting, but you know, it is a 3D printing stream, so I guess I could show you what I was, what we're doing here. Basically, all I'm gonna do right now is uh, plug everything in. My, again, my case is wonky because I need to create a new clip. There you go. Uh, good morning, Mad Cat. Hello. Uh. Lynn may go to the casino there near totality. See? If the yeah. Uh there you go. Uh where are we? I'm con uh considering printing some 330 T nuts in PETG instead of buying metal ones. Would I get away with them on a core XY build? You were really, really careful, maybe. Yeah. But I don't I don't know how long that would work. Give it a shot though. Uh, maybe if you print, if you could print them, if if you had the means to print them in PC, maybe you'd you'd get away with it a little bit longer. But uh, give it a shot; it's not going to hurt nothing. The quick print. Yeah, why not? Uh, somebody wants to know uh, if you're going to put a different screen on the bear build. Uh, maybe eventually. Yeah. 
Glenn Hogue went and saw it in IMAX. Ghostbusters in IMAX. Cool. That would be cool. Uh, yeah. And then, uh, there you go. I'm wondering if your case will hit the X-axis motor when the extruder is in lower position. Uh, Gregor says. Hmm. It might. It's it's just right on the line, but we'll we'll check that out I, again. That's probably something I have to work into that bracket, but it shouldn't uh, shouldn't be hard to fix it where it won't. Yeah, I didn't take that into account, but uh, you know you learn things as you go. Mm. And to start, I do have five drivers on this board. To start out, I am going to run the Z motors in parallel, just to make things a little easier for myself. But then we might switch to uh, independent so that we can do fancy bed leveling stuff if we want. Just thinking about this right now, I don't even know if or what Big Tree Tech puts on these boards when they make them. Does it have like a rough version of Marlin on it already? I've never really thought to check. I know like the mini boards have you know, like an Ender 3 config on them by default, but I don't know about the full-size boards. He says get that fancy G34 action. That's right. Um, Sounds dirty. Has anyone used, oh, a 3D pen? We were just talking about that. Uh, has anyone ever used a 3D pen printer? I got one for my birthday, but I have next to no artist artistic ability. That's my problem with them. Yeah, it's like I, I can't draw anyway. I can't even frost a cake. <laughs> I have do not have a steady hand. Uh, I need to calculate a frame like that to move my old Arthurbot, Arthrobot for other parts over. It would make mounting the PSU and LCD one hundred percent easier. I should probably not have read that out loud. I was probably not talking to us. Well, talking to whoever will listen, but you know. Well, um, I don't know if I don't even need those two. We'll read them out. Uh, during your last stream, I was designing a case for my seven inch touchscreen as I was test printing it, test fitting it. I managed to shatter the glass on the touchscreen. Oh no. <sighs> now I just have a seven inch screen. Hmm. What a bummer. That is a bummer. How incredibly disappointing. Do you think you can you replace that? It'd be hard to find the part. Uh, maybe I don't. I don't know. I think that would be really difficult. Oh, uh, Glenn will be around. Uh, yeah, he's gonna be listening. He won't be participating in the chat, but he'll be here. So. Right. Um. Anyway. So this probe. So you, so you have choices. Like when you use a bed probe, if you're building from scratch, like we are. Now, on a bear, a Prusa machine, I would just as soon, like, we don't have an end stop. We could use sensor the something. We're not going to. Uh, you don't have an end stop, so you have to use your probe for um, your Z homing, and that's what we're going to have to do. The coupler they gave me, though, is broke out into a 2 and a 3. The 3 has the power on it. So I'm wondering if they intend for these couplers to be used on a mini? Because on all, or maybe, maybe the other versions of SKR boards were different. I don't know. But for this one, I would just make it my min Z stop, and I would want it all in the same three prong coupler. So that's what I'm going to do. But just kind of thinking out loud there, why they would give you that splitter, what board they intended for you to use this with. But either way, we'll, we'll make it work. All righty, there you go. Uh, oh, we're discussing 3D pins. Still a little bit. Handy for repairing prints. That's a good idea. Use them to repair prints. Uh, especially larger multi-piece print gaps. And uh, some people create some amazing stuff with 3D pins, but not me. <laughs> me yeah. neither. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, me neither. I, I don't, I've never tried it, but I don't have a lot of faith in myself. Uh, I see you're using the SKR3 for your bear. I just had to replace my SKR 1.4 with the SKR3 yesterday. 
and the release firmware has a pretty serious bug if you input sh- if input shaping is enabled. Have you noticed that? Mm, no, I haven't um, hit that one yet. The extra wire for the Pinda 2's thermistor. Yeah, uh, they, there's a fourth wire, yes, for a Pinda 2 thermistor if you have that probe. This is a super Pinda, so it does not have the, the thermistor pin. Good eye, though. Good eye. Uh, <laughs> schematic. They probably ought to get the schematic out. Nah, why, why would I want to do that? Uh, Tom Lama says, by the, oh, by the way, Chris, yes, I would love those parts. I'd prefer money, but don't have any, LOL. But I can trade for a nice cutting board. <laughs> well, hmm. uh, now you've piqued the wife's interest. Hmm. We'll, uh, we'll worry about uh, trade and all that stuff at a later date. I'll, uh, I'll send you the parts and uh, you can do whatever you want with them. Okay. I, I would love to tell you that I had plans. Well, I do have plans that I'm going to... My idea was, Tom, while we're talking about this, we're talking about Omnia drop extruder parts. I have a bunch of them, and I bought a bunch of them, and they're not that cheap. My idea was, is I was going to build one that was back-to-back, so I could have two. Like, morph them into one body. And I got started on the project. But I didn't make it that far. And I don't think I'll ever go back to said project, so maybe you can continue said project. There you go. People are jumping in. Somebody says Llama Loops does some pretty wood things. He does. He does. I've seen them. Yeah, wood thing. I don't know. Uh, Llama Loop. There you go. Don't break. Yeah, I feel bad for you, uh, Hobbies with Newbie, with your screen breaking. I didn't tell you. Did you, I don't know if you saw the comment, but there is a don't break kind of meme or whatever on there. Yeah, uh, that's what we need. We had that. Yeah, there you go. Don't break, don't break, don't break. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Brown is power. It is in the right location. And then I always forget if it's black or blue that is the trigger pin. Oh, is that clock? Is that Llamas? Tom Llamas, the clock? Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, Tom made that clock. Cool. All right. How many printer prusers? How many? How many printer prusers? How many Prusa printers do you own and use? Uh, I own a lot. Um, a lot. I got. <laughs> I don't even know if we should talk about how many I have. The it de- it's Prusa printers definitely snowballed on me. Let's put it that way. Uh, I've got two Mark Twos, and I believe I have. Four Mark Threes, and I have a Mark Four, and I have an XL. Is there more? I don't think so. Well, I mean, I got. Are pr- you sure? Well, no, I'm not one hundred percent sure. <laughs> but I got a Prusa Bear. Does um, that count? Yes. Um, the bug I have with the SKR three is on boot. It just hangs on the splash screen. Hmm. The only one that matters is the log. Log. Mighty, mighty log. No mini? You have a mini. Oh, yeah. I have a mini. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look, he doesn't know. <laughs> I don't know. I <laughs> he really doesn't know how many he has. He doesn't know how know. many he's using. When can I have it? No idea. Yeah. He has all of them. Just... <laughs> I, I walk around and say, hey, that'll make a good video. Yeah. And then that's it. Yeah. Uh, All right, so that's what we did. We just switched yeah. it over to three wire, and we're going to use that on the min, min Z pin. Hobbies with newbie was so close to the final iteration of his case too before he broke the screen. Ain't that the way it goes, man? That sucks. I feel for him because I do stuff like Me that. Too. That stinks. Uh, Should have just left this off. Be easier for us to all see it. How are we doing on time? It's eleven forty-six. We've been a little over an hour. Just over an hour. Yes. Uh, so there you go. 
what is everybody doing for Easter Sunday? Does anybody celebrate Easter Sunday? We don't really celebrate. It's more like a, uh, well, it's a reason to eat. That's pretty much all that is around here. We want to eat. It's a reason for me to make snacks, to go off the diet and make something special. So, uh, oh, here we go. Uh, where do you buy your printers online or brick and mortar? Usually online for you, huh? I think I, I've bought one printer in an actual store one time, and it's one of the worst printers I've ever used. Oh, we, we got you one. Uh, that was at Micro Center, right? Did yep. you get a Micro Center printer? Yeah. Well, I don't know what brand it was, but. Uh, it was an I, uh, Wan Hao duplicator I3. It was cheap, though. Yeah. That was before the days of Creality. Yeah. Uh, I have an MK3S with MMU2 and Anet A8, which I'm currently sourcing parts to convert to a Core XY and an Igloo Mars 2 Pro Resin printer. Resin. Ooh. Now, we don't mess with resin around here. Don't do resin. Uh, Easter Sunday is good for watching NASCAR. I agree. Easter is an excuse to cook a large ham. Also, I agree. What's uh, what race, Mike? Is is what, on Easter? What's this weekend, Mike? What's the big race, Mike? Fancy. I get all my NASCAR news from Mike. Uh, um. So at the grocery store at Hy-Vee, our local grocery store. Uh, sometimes they do, they're called quarter spirals and it's just a bone in spiral cut ham, but it's only, it, you know, you get a whole ham, a half a ham and a quarter ham. And sometimes they sell those at, with the bone and they are delicious and they're only about six pounds and that's just right for me and Chris. So we'll, you know, we'll cook it, eat on it for a couple of days and then I'll freeze the rest. And, you know, make ham and eggs or something like that with it whenever I get around to it. But that's pretty nice. And they did not have any this year. So no ham for us. <laughs> I spend Easter putting as much chocolate into my body as humanly possible. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Richmond, Virginia. Qualifying just finished a few minutes ago. Eddie's driver is on the pole. Okay. All right, then. Um, we are hosting a family lunch for Easter after church, of course. You good Catholic man, Sergio. I don't know. I, actually, are you Catholic? Mm. I have no idea. Um, I have. That's the, that's the big the C&E Catholics, right? That's, that's the big one, honey. It's, not, it's, it's the long mass on Easter. Uh, and that's where they turn off all the lights and mm. just do the candle. And uh, it's kind of, I don't know, you know. Um, 50 50 shot, 100% wrong, I swear. Uh, these JST connectors, like you, you know, positive, negative, pick a side. Of course, I didn't pick the right side. So I guess I'll be redoing those right now. Anyway. There you go. Okay. Uh, See, we're hosting a family lunch for Easter. Oh, I already read that. I have uh, two Prusa MK3S Plus, one unassembled bear, two, one blue frame, waiting on money to get parts for it, and two tore apart Malin M200s mini printers. Oh. Bob Kearns has a 15 pound ham. Good for you. That'll be nice. Uh,. My neighbor always has a big dinner for Easter this year. She called and said, brunch. I'm doing brunch because I'm tired of being hung over the next day at work. That's a good idea. Get your <laughs> drink on early and that way you can go to bed early. It hurts a little less. That's, I'm a day drinker myself. I prefer, you like to wait until the evening before this, you, this seems right. before you open your beers. Chris is a five o'clock man. I will start as early as I need to. So it just depends on the situation. Normally 11 or 12 if I, you know, if, if I'm doing brunch or whatever. And, you know, uh, Dave Wilson says Aldi's has a ham. And we've gotten that Aldi's ham. We did the little that Aldi's ham for Christmas. Hi, Dave, by the way. Dave Wilson. Hello. Hey, Dave. Uh, anyway, though, uh, we've done that one for Christmas. There's no bone in it. It's still very good. It's a nice spiral, spiral cut ham and it's very good. 
but um the little one i mean not the big big ones uh but you know well it it's just the you know we'll probably do it again uh yes uh sergio's catholic so he's going to the going to easter easter mass going the long the, mass going to the big show the big show tomorrow's the day uh uh let's see i'm not doing anything for easter maybe read a few chapters of god's word there you go they will be surely somebody will be able to find a uh 10 commandments the 10 chris and i talk about it every year i think are they gonna show the 10 commandments of course they are uh what is this russia <laughs> not no offense to anyone that is from russia by the way <laughs> I, I know a lot of good people. Now you've done it. I know a lot of good people that are from Russia. Open mouth, insert foot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, happens to the best of us. What? What? I don't know what. Uh, what did you? Did you do something? I flip flop these plugs. Oh, it happens to everybody. Can they please use one common connector for thermistors and heater <laughs> cartridges? No. Oh no. No, that'd be too easy. Uh, there you go. Uh, the Malin M two hundred are mono prize mini selects. Do you know them? Uh huh. Okay, there you yeah. go. Uh, Andrew Rogers not really doing anything for Easter. Wife and the mini me are flying out to Arizona for spring break, while I stay home and take care of the mother in law. Oh, well, what a good guy you you're are. Good. That's good on you. Uh, Tom Lama's a lunch drinker. Me too. Uh, it does make the rest of the day more interesting. Yes, take a nap if you're if you time it out just right. You drink during the day, take a little nap in the afternoon, and then get but get back up for dinner. Um, I don't think that was. Oh, sorry. There you go. Uh, as I make, I make a X Y core from my A net A eight. That's quite the quite the project to turn that A8 into a Core XY. I've seen that project a couple of times. It's uh, a bit daunting. Yes. Um, I just finished converting my Ender 5 Plus to Mercury 1, 1 with an Octopus board, CAN bus, and Voron tap. All right. Hello, Paul the Texan. Hello. Welcome. Uh, John in... Uh, John says it's five o'clock somewhere. <laughs> Absolutely. It's always five o'clock somewhere. That's what they tell and me. Andrew Rogers says day drinking is the best drinking. I absolutely agree. <laughs> I, I am. I'm a day drinker, you know? And uh, so me and my friend Mary go out. We have a Sunday fun day and we go and we have our long lunch. And uh, that's I'll dr We'll have drinks and then hang out. I'll come home and I'll eat dinner and then I'll be done. Like, Asleep by about seven or seven thirty, <laughs> but I do enjoy it. Uh, ooh, Tom Lama has local made hard apple cider. I might just have to have one right now. <laughs> it's Saturday. It's past noon where you are. Don't yeah, don't drink in the sun or you will come undone. I <laughs> yes, you have to be very careful with sun dope. What is it? Uh, two beers, one water. That's what they that's what I've heard is the two drinks, one water. And then you'll be all right. This is probably the most riveting YouTube content you've ever seen. JST connection swapping. On your hands covering the of course it is. Project, so we can't see it anyway. But look at my hands. <laughs> uh, Tom Lama, or uh, somebody says, Andrew says to Tom Lama, don't, if you don't have enough to share with the entire class, <laughs> that's right. We've already been scolded once today. That's right. Just pay it forward, Andrew. <laughs> one tequila, one beer times three, then. Beers for the rest of the night. <laughs> Cheap date. One there you go. What is, the, what is the saying? One tequila, two tequila, three, three tequila, tequila, four. four. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's not about right. a tequila drinker myself. Um, I like it, but it didn't like me that much. I mean, I like margaritas. Uh, yeah, you used to drink 1800. That was his shot. I used to be a young man. Back in the day, mine used to be uh, Jägermeister. Oh. Mm. We had a Jäger, Jäger machine that kept, you know, ice cold Jäger like on tap so, at the so bar bad. that we would go to. So Jäger was my drink. I don't think I could do it now. Um, but Jäger used to be my drink. And beer. Miller Lite. And Yeho tequila. Hmm. See, now I think I, I'd be more likely to do sip it. You know, it takes drink tequila now. I never did before, but I was an idiot. I would sip it. I wouldn't, you know, shots. I, you know. Uh, All right. But I'll bet a, a good tequila. I think I'm ready to power this on just to see what happens. Kyle Lama's on a roll. He's got his Applejack, and he's going for it. All right. I won't get in his way. <laughs> I gotta put all my pretties on, all my little bear insignia things. Yeah. We'll do that. Uh, okay, so we have choices. So we want them to go ahead and power up, and then we can do a real, like, a super fast run through of a Marlin configuration, or we could spend the rest of this stream getting all of the cool things on and doing wire management and save firmware for another stream. All right, gang, what do you think? Hmm. Power up, super quick Marlin. Firmware, or save firmware for another day. Bells and firmware or bells and whistles. Because the... basically the hardware is done. Now we're just down to wires and uh, everything is complete. Power it up, somebody says. Maker Dave says, power it up. Uh, mind erasers. Oh, God. Uh, That's one of my favorite wife sound effects, by the way. <laughs> uh, a dedicated firmware stream would probably be good. Keith, yeah. Keith vote. So we got one for, uh, oh, got two fired ups and one save it for another day. Uh, doing the wiring if the, if the case is not final might be an issue. That's true. True. Good point. We probably ought to work on the case uh -huh. before uh -huh. we do the final wiring. Uh, let us see the magic smoke. Yeah, that's always a good option. <laughs> uh, depends on how tired you are. Yeah. Oh, or maybe they're talking about. I don't know. Fired up. Red light says. Right. Hello, red light. By the way, haven't seen you yet today. Hello, red light. I'll put these top two covers on, and then we'll fire it up. Hold All up. right. So I did a little of each. There we go. Um. There you go. Full send. Thank you, Andrew. Oh, Andrew you can thumbs Rogers up the... Is a cider. You like cider beer, huh? Or cider whatever? Sorry, go ahead. What, honey? You can thumbs up the... Is that, is that a thing that you can thumbs up? Or is it just something he added on it? Because it has thumbs up one. Like, if you click in chat, can you thumbs up his chat that he just did? Oh. See in the blue? Yes, I just did it. Oh, Thanks, nice. Andrew. Thank you for the five dollars. That's a new feature that I haven't seen before. Oh, now it's got four. Cool. Sweet. I didn't know that that existed. Thank you very much for the, the knowledge and the five bucks, Andrew. If you're even a little bit tired, leave the firmware for another day. I think we're just gonna play with it and then I <laughs> could do firmware. No, we're just gonna mess with it and then we'll. If I had. And then we'll do that. If I'd been up for a month. YouTube just added the thumbs up, by the way. Sweet. In a windstorm on the equator. There we go. Uh, I've been drinking a lot of, like, Boulevard wheat, Boulevard unfiltered wheat lately. That's kind of been my go-to. I think tonight uh, I got a bottle of Chardonnay with my name on it. It depends on what we're going to do for dinner. 
but <clears throat> so far I'm thinking Chardonnay. And uh, there you go. Good old Kendall Jackson Chardonnay. Consistently, it's consistent. It's consistently mediocre, but it's a good, it's just, it's a good go to. Uh, Benchy time, somebody says. <laughs> If you never did a team drink, bar takes Asper takes Asper huge half gallon martini glass, fills it up with whatever shot mix, and then a bunch of friends get a straw. Oh God, no, Tom, no, be on the floor. No, <laughs> it's hard pass. All right, what? No buck chuck for you. <laughs> Oh, Buck Chuck. Buck Chuck. <laughs> That's pretty funny. <laughs> no, no, no Buck Chuck. Not now, anyway. Maybe 20 years ago I could do a do something like that. But... All right, let's turn it on and see what happens. All right. Uh, yeah. I guess we, don't, we guess we could use a there you go. camera just in case something explodes. We want to make sure it gets on stream. It won't. Pull that box out of the way. It'll be fine. There we go. Thank you. Now we can see what's going on. Uh, there's a red light on the board. Um, there's no light on my screen. I bet you I have those flip flops. Oh, actually, actually, that's an LDO screen. So there are two different kinds of rep wrap screen. LDO screens, you would actually have to flip the plug upside down to get it to work. Uh, Forgot about that. Everybody is celebrating your turning on the... You see this? Yay! Don't break, fire, blue smoke, yay! Let's hit some, when you uh, assemble your MK3s, do you push the belly, B-E-L-Y, all the way to the X carriage so that the belt is as far as it can go into it or do you just push the belt into the x carriage uh, i think you're talking about the slop at the end of the belt like the extra i i try to make it so that uh you know i trim it down and push it in as far as i can so there's no lap so it doesn't have any chance of getting on the gear uh, i think that's what you're talking about but i just push it down in the i, I cut it pretty short and push it down in the carriage uh, this one actually has a great tensioner on it. The the bear, the X bear, has a really good tensioner, so you don't have to worry about it as much as on the Prusa side. Um, so yeah, so it powered on. We're not going to do much because it doesn't have any firmware on it. Probably, uh, I am going to flip these plugs real quick. What I was just talking about the LCD screen. I'm using an actual LDO screen, and they are upside down compared to other rep rep style screens. I'm gonna do that real fast. There you go. Uh belt. He was said belt. It, yeah. Sorry, George. I I don't when I'm not I when I don't proofread it, I just read what's in front of me. So <laughs> I probably could have figured that out, but I don't proofread, I just read. Uh like sorry about that. Anyway, uh I grew up in the most drunk town in the US. I don't drink any longer. Lacrosse, Wisconsin, with a name like Lacrosse, named after a sport. Lots of drinking. Huh. Uh There you go. It's hard to get these off without breaking. Yeah. Oh, here you go. I want my thumb up. He wants his thumbs up. <laughs> thank you, Greg. Thank you, uh, Gregor. Yeah, definitely. Uh, thank you very much for the 10. And I want to try to... Flip. Now Now that I see the thumb up thing, I want to try the thumb up. Do do it. Can Work. You? Yeah. Yeah. There you go. I think he pushes it all the way to the X carriage and not just flush. Yes, it goes. I I cram it in there. Thank you. 
Should have thought about all this before I put all this in here, huh? You got a heart face emoji. Heart face emoji. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Side cutters to cut off the key is a fast and good option than ripping off the housing from the board. Yeah. Good. Yes, that's true. Probably easier to do this on the screen side. Well, we are doing uh, bacon wrapped brat or not bacon, excuse me. Although that would be really good. Pretzel wrapped bratwurst. So uh, we're going to give that a try. We make it in the oven and uh, it's uh, it'll be good. I don't know. Pretzel wrapped bratwurst. We're going to do that. Sounds good. Yeah, we got a plan and some potato salad and uh, some deviled eggs because you have to have eggs for Easter. And uh, what else? What else? Oh, German beer. I'm making some German beer. And last night I made some butter cookies. That are phenomenal. Chris loves them. They butter taste like funnel cake. Butter cookies. They're yummy, yummy. It's uh, butter and cream cheese and yellow cake mix with some. Uh, yeah, something like that. Um, yeah, with uh, powdered sugar, and they are yummy, yummy. Uh, pastry wrap bratwurst. Yes, pretty much. Well, not pastry. Uh, so it's kind of it's kind of like canned pastry. pizza dough that you can get in the grocery store, and then if you dissolve like baking soda into some water, it'll give you the kind of that sheen on the bread, like a bagel or a pretzel has on it. And then, uh, so, yes, but we're going to cut down. He asked if it was a massive pig in a blanket. It's, yeah, but we're going to cut the bratwurst into thirds, into bite-sized pieces. And then, uh, yeah, and then, uh, and, and cook them in the oven that way. Hold on just a second. Hold, please. Yeah, yeah, here we go. I'm going to put up a link here and it'll show you guys a picture. There you go. Is there anything on it? It acts like it wants to be something on it. I'm going to put, and then it'll show you guys a picture of what I'm making. Check it out. And they say you can make them in the air fryer, but uh, we're going to do ours in the oven. And, uh, and it's, hopefully it's good. We'll see. But, uh, and there you go. Um, yeah, and we're going to do some Wurstiner. we have some German beer, and it'll be yummy. It'll be all right. Uh, what's your favorite CF filament and why? My favorite CF filament by Chris Riley. Uh, I've had a lot of CF filament. Bush Plastics makes a really good one. I was using that for a long time. Um. Oh, what was the, there was one I just had the other day that was pretty good, and I can't remember what it was, but, um, Atomic makes a really awesome PETG CF, but if you haven't had the pleasure, get Prusament Polycarbonate CF Fill. That stuff is phenomenal, and it prints super easy, so I'm really into that. <laughs> beep, beep, boop, boop, oh, beep. Sorry, uh, hey, it does have Marlin on it. Hey, it booted up. Right. Cool. Uh, maybe those instead of jello shots at Murph. I don't have the time. <laughs> I would love to. Actually, that sounds a lot like a lot of fun. Uh, there you go. Barbecuing maple smoked bacon wrapped around pierogies. That sounds delicious. Yeah. Awesome. Oh, the the somebody couldn't click on the site in Germany. Hmm. <laughs> because a self-respecting German wouldn't do that. No problem. Probably true. <laughs> <laughs> Burned at the stake. Where you guys are. Uh, yeah, Andrew. Small parts. They come out awesome. 
in open air on that PCCF. I, it sticks like a madman on a satin sheet. I can't explain it, but uh, I've just used it for like small printer parts. It prints really well. So, so it does have Marlin on it. It's configured for two extruders. Hmm? And we have TMC connection errors because it's probably not configured for UART. But it boots. It runs. I'm pretty impressed with that. Andy's here. Hi, Andy. Hey, Andy. No Chris at Remurf. I will not make it to Remurf this year to Rocky Mountain. Uh, I, unfortunately, I don't believe Earth is in within my sights either. We're going to do our best to come to Murph, though. I think we're going to try to come to Murph. Uh, I've been using 3D X Tech at ABS CF, ACA CF, and PETG CF. George has. Cool. Uh, Tom Lama wants jello shots. It's a holiday, Tom. That's why you got booze on the brain. It's totally cool. We have the Royals home opener on Thursday, too. So many reasons to celebrate. Uh, and I believe we play the Orioles next week so good afternoon 3d medic vince vince is here hello cool fans work well i'm just already just very pleased with this whole thing go reds so do we want to speed run some marlin at least we could see it move if we got the basics done i can we can keep uh sidekick down in the corner while we screen share uh, Hour and 43 minutes. Andrew's Over. got a new shot glass design for Murph this year. I should get that soon. I can't wait to see it. That's, Murph is always so much fun. How's this view? Are you happy with screen share and, and you in the corner? They don't need to see me. Oh, I, yes. I don't even, I, they don't need to see me either. All right, so lo there's going to be lots of. I'm going to take. I'm going to do this all in one breath. <gasps> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, I, so I kind of wanted to try to be this, be this somewhat of a tutorial of how I would do this, uh, because I think like when people get started with Marlin or they want to compile Marlin, this is the biggest task. So I'm going to hit the highlights here real quick, and we'll uh, pause to take breaks to talk about stuff. But I got about. 10 minutes worth of content here. Uh, so, marlinfw.org, go download zip file. Make sure you unzip the file. People ask me that all the time. Why doesn't this work? It's because you, cause, because you never unzip the file. So, make sure you do that. Uh, so, then you've got your Marlin, unzip it. I just renamed it for Red Bear. We're good there. So, now you go to VS Code and you want to open up said folder. So, go to the Explorer, open up folder. Find that folder. You have to open up the folder that contains the Marlin folder or it will not work. Go back up one level. You want to open that guy. Select folder. Before you do anything, you will have to have platform IO installed and I highly recommend the Marlin auto build tool uh, because it lets you build. But once you have all of both of those installed, they're in extensions. You can just add them, just search for them and add them. Uh, go to your build tool when you have opened up your Marlin. You should see platform I O I N I. That's how you know you've done it correctly. You've got .pio. You've got .vs code. You've done this. You have opened the correct folder if those exist. Marlin build tool. It defaults to ramps, so just hit build. See, it's it's building four ramps. Mega twenty five sixty. Make sure it builds before you start editing it. Or just give it a second here while it crashes my computer during a stream. If it builds successfully, it's going to give you a hex file. And that's how you know it built correctly. So now we're good. We know the base code is good. Now we can start uh, trashing and thrashing on this thing. Uh, and I'm going to do this. The fa one of the fastest builds we've ever done. Uh, what I always like to put the author in. And what we did, because I have a million of these configurations. And they hand them out all over the place. Red Bear 24, uh, show boot screen, show custom, custom status screen image, none of that. Motherboard, easiest way to do that is to go to source, go to core, go to boards. And let's just do control F, not over there, control F, SKR. 
and we have the three, the non-EZ version. It's this guy right here. We'll copy that, batch configuration.h. We're going to paste it right there. Uh, serial ports for this board, I would probably have to get that from Keith, but I can make a really good guess. Uh, also, I wanted to use the show custom boot screen, show status. Isn't there like a printer name in this neighborhood somewhere? Anyway, uh, we're going to go negative one. This is a 32-bit board. 250,000 is fine. I won't worry about the second serial right now. I won't need it for anything. This is what I want. Custom printer name. Uh, this is what shows at the bottom of the printer screen when you boot up. Drivers, we are running 2209s in UART mode, so don't pick the standalone. And we're running them for all four axes. When he says the motherboard has two Bs in it. I'm sure it'll all come out in the wash, though. I don't want to slow it you down. It does have two Bs in it. There Thank you. Go. Yep. Uh, yeah, we'll know that as soon as we hit compile. I'll say, well, then we'll just... But it's fine. Uh, one extruder, filament diameter, we're good. We're keep, we'll keep on trucking here. This is all dual extruder stuff. PS control we don't have. Thermal settings. We have an E3D thermistor for the extruder. That is a number five. And we have a regular 100K for the bed. That is a one. We will keep on moving. Uh, min temps, max temps, I'm fine with all that. That's stuff that I like to set later. I'm going to leave it. PID will have to be auto-tuned later. Uh, good enough for now. Keith called out a mini E3 board. It's also not a mini E3 board. Is it mini? Yeah, man. Call them when you see them, guys. I said I I hate to slow you down. That's fine. Yeah, or it all comes. Uh, you know, again, it'll all come out in the wash. We'll fix it now, or we'll fix it later. Exactly. Thank you, though. There you go. All right. I don't like this wheel. I don't use his mouse very much, I guess. You know, a true nerd when he starts complaining about the mouse and the keyboard. <laughs> Fixed. All right. Thermos series. We went past that. All this stuff default. All the default temp. PID t default. Default. Uh, chamber. Cold extrusion. Length extrusion. I'm fine with that. Thermal runaway. That's all intact. Here. You have to select your kinematics if you have something other than Cartesian. It defaults to Cartesian, like if you need a core XY, this is where you do it. We don't have to do that. Um, this, so we are homing to zero on everything, so we're, we're using min plugs. We're all good there. Uh, I'm going to leave this. I believe all this nowadays stays at false. It used to be you have to flip-flop a lot of this. I don't think you have to do that anymore, but we'll find out. Um, default axes. These are, I believe, the stock 18 tooth. It's either 80 or 100, but I don't remember which. Keith would know. Uh, the easiest way to find that is if you know how many teeth are on the pulley, you can use something called a Prusa calculator. Belt pitch, degree, tooth count, uh, micro stepping. I believe, are these 20 tooth or 18 tooth? I think they're 18. No, not 18s. 16? I think they're 16. Keith would know. I'm waiting for him to reply. Yeah. Ever. It's either 80 or 100. I don't remember which, but it's easy enough to figure out which one you've done wrong. 16. 16, 16. Okay. Gregor so, said. So it's, so it's 100. Yeah. Um, on your lead screw, trying to remember now. 
Do you have another calculator for this? Sixteen hundred divided by so yes, it's four hundred for a four star leads group. Four hundred for Z. Yep. Just popped in. Thank you. And then we'll have to configure this. I usually set it like to ninety three ish. Let's call it ninety five. So there's the hard part. Uh, all of this stuff. I'm just going to leave the speeds and the acceleration to default. We'll have to tune all that later. Uh, we'll let it use. Uh, classic jerk, we, we could do that, but we'll let it use um, junction deviation instead. That's fine. We don't need to mess with any of that. Uh, Z-min probe uses Z-min in stops. That's where I was telling you we put the probe in the Z-min pin. So this is good. We don't have to deal with that. Fixed mounted probe is what we're using. That inductive probe. So we'll take the comment off of that. Classic jerk. Classic. That's me. Not these new Fandango <laughs> jerks. <laughs> Classic jerks. That's right. Uh, <laughs> I don't remember the offsets on this probe, but it's not super crucial to what we're going to do today. We're probably we're not going to print. We're just going to get a working config, and then I'll come back and measure that. It's easy enough to measure, but I don't want to mess with it in a moment. That's a second round uh, thing for me. Uh, we do want to alter. I'm just going to leave the motor direction. I'm going to leave that default for now. Uh, we'll test it when we flash to make sure they're spinning the right way. Uh, we can change the size. Prusa style is 250, 210, and then Z, 210. Software insofts is good. Filament run out. I'll come back and do that later. Bed leveling. We're going to start with bilinear. And we'll just leave it at defaults, which is three by three grid. We will have to, I would like to hit the, the leveling spots, but we'll have a sheet, so it really doesn't matter. Um, safe homing. It's going to throw an error about safe homing. Uh, you should be able to home these off the bed. I'm going to leave that. Man, we could let's just enable it for to now. We don't want it home in the center of the bed, but we'll we'll set the spot for that later. EEPROM, I'm gonna turn it on. So you can save a few things in EEPROM if you need to. I like to adjust my temperatures. 215, 60, 255, 100. Nozzle park. I'll have to set all that up if we want to use filament runout. We want to do SD support. Uh, I'll probably want to reverse some of these encoders and things. We'll turn on sound. And we officially have a rep wrap discount smart controller for our screen. This is it. This is this is all you need to have a bare bones configuration for a Prusa style machine. There are lots of different things that we will tweak, but uh, I think this is it. So let's uh, go ahead, Marlin build. It should now know. It should have flipped over. I didn't save. Uh, Hobbies with Newbie really liked your drying video. Oh, yeah? Week. Good. Yeah, it helped explain a lot of the weird issues he's been having. You know, and sometimes the simplest exclamation or explanation is usually the, the correct one. Was it Occam's Razor, right? right. Uh, that's one of those, it's like, people know to dry their filament, right? I shouldn't, mm -hmm. I shouldn't make this video. But uh, it was so obvious that that spool needed to be dried that I just had to do it. Well, and sometimes it's just not... You're thinking about the machine. You're thinking about technical issues, you right. know, and instead of environmental. 
So sometimes it's just not on your radar. Hopefully that's where I come in and save the day. That's right. Hey, did you dry your filament? Maybe that's what you, you know. Is it plugged in? When, like real life, like one of my buddies in real life, if they told me that, I'd be like, get out of here. What do you mean, dry your filament? And then if it fixed, I would never tell them yes. if the, yes. that's what happened. You got to keep that one under your head. That's hat. right. Still compiling. Hasn't blown up yet. Red Bear 24. Oh, that's true. Essential is homing. We didn't, um, we probably ought to do that real quick. So that's in configuration underscore ADV. That's one of the first things that, uh, you're gonna have to deal with. So we don't want home bump or senseless homing. It did compile successfully, so that's good. We can leave it at eight. I don't know that that's going to be successful at eight. Seems low. But we have to start somewhere, right? So let's just enable it for now. We'll compile one more time. Oh, he says 90 to 100. I'll believe him. I'm, All right, there my you PC go. is going, what? Why are you doing this to me? Yeah. What's going around? Uh, ho uh, Hobbies with Newbie is going to be making changes to his food de dehydrator for now. Uh, it hasn't had food in it for years. Well, there you go. Repurpose. There you go. I don't need to spend money on something if you don't need to. Food dehydrating seemed like it was a craze. What, what was that, like in the uh, 90s, maybe? I remember the infomercials. There has to be a million of those in the thrift stores, like, everywhere. That's true. Repurpose what you have. No need to spend a bunch of money on stuff. You don't need to. Are we playing the game of, is this a compiler error or a Marlin <laughs> error? Shane's here. I also don't know which chip I have. Apparently, SKR... Uh, three has two different chips, but there's no way with my own eyes I would be able to read this chip, so I'm just going to slide over here with my cell phone real quick and see if I can see it. Where's your magnifying glass? Oh, today? it's over here in the drawer now that, that you I mentioned that. I got you for Christmas. EG. This is an H723. What are my options? H743 H723VG H723, 723 H723VG is what it says. So I compiled for 43VI. I actually want this one. Last time. Right at 2 hours. We're going to we're going to be right on time for this. Mm -hmm. Can you run EZ5160 Pro drivers? Uh, yeah. I mean, I, the, you can, if, if you have a board that they fit, this, the, this SKR only has the step stick. They don't have the EZ slot. Uh, but you should be able to run 5160s just fine. Uh, Mike Fancy says he bought an unused food dehydrator years ago online, and it works great as a filament dehydrator. He suspected, he suspects it was an unappreciated gift. <laughs> yes, there was a whole food dehydrator craze there for a little while, I believe in the 90s. Yeah, I seem to remember that. Yeah. 
working the off shift and all of the infomercials were about dehydrating things. Yes, and then the set it and forget it after that. Remember that? The set it and forget That's it. That's Ronco. Yeah. Like that, he like did that on the everything. The rotisserie yeah, the, or something. I remember the rotisserie, yeah. Uh, Chris would be using a Big Tree Tech piggyback 336. Be good to help cut down on cables going into the extruder. Yeah. Going to extruder. Yeah, if you can work it into your design, that kind of stuff is always awesome. The filament dehydrates, but can it be smoked? <laughs> mm. the pocket fisherman. Ah, the pocket fisherman. Yeah, that was like the first Ronco thing, I think. I think I recall that, yes. Yeah, there's like so many things that we could go over in this configuration, but I would just like to see it do oh, something. Yeah, just hammer one out real quick, and then we'll see what, you know. There you go, firmware.bin. We're, we're close. Uh, I have no idea what firmware this was, but I'm going to reuse this card. Boom. This will get us at least 50% of the way there. Hair in a can. Do you remember that? <laughs> I remember that. Whoa. <laughs> Uh, Tom Lama's neighbor has a set it and forget it rotisserie, and he says it's actually really awesome for <laughs> roasted chickens. I believe it. I believe it. Uh, I could get into that. Roasted chicken's pretty good. Yeah, it'd just be a matter of hauling that thing out. But if you had a place to put it, why not? Bink, 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 bink. Blinking. Doing it. Two one two two, EEPROM. I don't know why it doesn't want me to reset it. There we go. Settings stored. Temperatures are correct. Oh, did Weird Al have a song about Ron? I don't know. Oh, either. Uh, now we're gonna have to look it up. Uh, Tom Lama says prime rib is very good in the set it and forget it rotisserie. I'll bet it is. I make prime rib sometimes at Christmas around here. It. I'll tell you what though, man, it stresses me out making that it's a very expensive piece of meat and i really don't want to overcook it so i get real nervous making it's it's kind of tense around here when i have to make prime rib ask chris it's <laughs> real nervous uh ron ron's gone wrong i'm gonna look it up Pretty impressed if this thing homes, and it looks like it's going to. We did it! Nice! So all of those motors turned correctly. One thing we did not tackle was uh, the hot end fan. So it's, for this one, you can use, we didn't set it to be temp control. It's not always on. So we should do that real quick. Ah, I see it. I looked it up, the song. I'll watch it when we get done here. Nice. I'm gonna smoke a ribeye roast tomorrow. In my set it and pay attention to it constantly offset smoker. <laughs> That's funny, Paul. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> don't don't walk away. You're gonna overcook it. That's pretty much me. I just uh, I set it in the oven and then I sit and stare at the oven. Although I did get a um a temperature like a probe and a little nicer one to the elect uh, electric probe that you can put into roasts now that'll tell me when it's done and that has helped me a lot it's 
relieved some of my stress. Uh, but boy, it it's just expensive, <laughs> you know, and I just don't want to mess it up, especially with meat. It's so expensive now. And then so if you want to do a nice piece of, like a standing rib roast, it's crazy. Um, I don't mind paying for it because it's good. But God, you don't you want to err on the side of rare. You want to go rare. Uh, anyway. Uh, Pete, so I have see. fan zero. I have the part fan plugged in and I plugged in the hot end fan and fan one. And that is PB6. So in my config, in the advanced tab, E0 auto fan, I'm setting that to PV6, so it'll know that fan. And these temperatures are fine, 50, all that good stuff. Uh, so one more compile. I just want that to work. There we go. Oh, Keith sent you a couple of, there you go. Got a couple of comments there from Keith. The, fan win one yeah. the alias will work for more sports yeah i i should use all of those aliases more than i do i ended up i end up just looking up the pin number but yeah. i do that like the alias it's what you should do i punch in the pin numbers out of habit because i'm trying to explain what i'm doing in videos so i end up doing the same process uh because I, I think it doesn't make any sense it's like well why are you calling it fan one but it's just me. Random MMU question: Where did Prusa fix the cap? Did Prusa fix the capabilities of printing flexible through the MMU? I remember hearing they weren't working. They were working on it. Um, you know, honestly, I don't know that I've ever tried. That would be kind of a hard thing to do. Uh, I'll have to go look around. Honestly, I don't know if they if they tackled that or or what the status is of it. It it would be challenging. Yeah. Uh, Bob Karn says no, that flexible flexibles are still a pain due to all the PTFE tubes. I can't even imagine having to load it. Yeah. Like just loading it would be a nightmare. Pushing the limp spaghetti is rough. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. It, flexible works great on the XL, uh, but pushing that flexible filament all the way to the tool head <laughs> is maddening. <laughs> I don't think I've ever tried flexibles in the MMU 2 or 3, Mike Fancy says. I don't think I have either. <laughs> Chris Russell is here. Yay. Hello, Chris. Beta 5 is alive. That's us. That's us. Red In bear ready. Uh, somebody says input shaping question mark. Oh, we'll get there. We'll get there. Uh, fans working. That's, that's the big thing I wanted to do. Okay, so the only other thing I want to test real quick. Because um, we've got to set first layer height. We've got to do all that good stuff. But we can oh that's what i wanted to no that's the configuration temp preheat pla pla for the win uh we can test to make sure that the extruder is turning in the right direction that's the only other unknown that I have right at the moment. Everything else seems to work, though. Uh, where'd you find this printer? Somebody was asking, where did you find this bear printer? Uh, this is just what we built. So it, people that joined the stream, basically, I had this bear frame. And a bear frame is an extruded aluminum extrusion frame to upgrade your Prusa printer frame. That's what the bear was designed to do. I had one of these frames and then just a whole bunch of other parts around the shop, and we threw this printer together out of all of those parts. Yep. So it's a Franken-Bear, what they call it. So it's just parts that we had. Like, it's got a BMO Dragon Thetis Hot End. Um, it's got an SKR3 board and a whole bunch of other miscellaneous stuff. There you go. Uh, even if the MMU could do flexible, I don't have anywhere near the patience to push 40D through those tubes. Yeah. yeah. 
No, not happening. Uh, yeah. I I would struggle like with you know eighty or anything like that. It's just it's maddening to try to use that stuff. Yeah. He had a bear bear frame. <laughs> bear bear frame. Ah. Uh, this is a spare parts printer exactly. Spare parts. Printed solid might still have the LDO Bear two point one in stock. If anybody's interested, there you go. Yeah, I think they still got frames. Why wouldn't you? You know what I mean? That might be something you'd want to keep around. As long as people are still buying them. Why not? I and mean, it's a fun project. It's And it's a great printer when it's done. They're very sturdy. You print with yours all the time. The all, orange juice, all though, the time. All the time. All the time. I think that's kind of a go-to for you, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's the uh, most... When I'm just here working, it's the most convenient. I just turn around and... Because I can... I It's got a Raspberry Pi Zero. Uh, so I just send files over to it and it does its thing. LDO still makes the kits also. Abby Normal. You need to name the Franken Bear Abby Normal. <laughs> I don't know what that what's that referencing? Uh, uh abnormal. Oh. Uh, uh Keith was right on uh Senseless Homing, ninety five. It's a little hard, but it, it works. Nice. It uh, was good to have you in the stream today. You really helped me out. Young Frankenstein. It's a Young Frankenstein reference. I should know that. I sh I've seen that movie. Uh, and I can't believe that I don't know it. But yes. Young Frank. That's good. I like that. Uh, I love to hear it is your go-to. Really what I wanted to achieve with Bear. Well, you got it. It's an awesome machine. Yeah. Yes, it's it definitely the X motor definitely does not like my uh, uh, control board mount over there. We'll have to fix that. I gotta rework that part, but it's I mean, just barely, <laughs> barely. Uh, it it just needs a little bit more clearance. All right, so we're up to temp. I want to move the extruder. doesn't turn at all. Did I plug it in correctly? It thinks I did. What'd you do? I don't know. We set it to E0. It should work that way. Is the hot end heated up? Cold extrusion prevention? No, it's up to 10. Oh, they're tur oh, it is so it is backwards. It's just uh, they were turning super super slow, so that motor needs to be flip flopped. That's a pretty that's a very easy change. You got five more minutes for another compile. Sure, all right, whatever. What's for lunch today? Roast beef sandwches. Roast beef. So alone. Lettuce, tomato, mayonnaise. Uh, so remember when we said uh, classic jerk? <laughs> uh, when we did this invert. No, I want motor direct drive. True, yeah. So invert false. I'm just gonna make this true. To fix that. You don't like mayonnaise? Uh, Chris? Practical printing doesn't like mayonnaise. Chris. What? I thought I knew you. Yeah. We have a uh, gray poupon if you prefer. <laughs> I like the spicy mustard. Um, I'm starting a full bear build with the Revo 6 extruder and I'm enjoying your build. Thank you. Awesome. Well, thanks, Will. Uh, 
Yeah, making you hungry. Yep. Tom Lama just had that with a cider. There you go. What? Don't tacos have mayo in them? What are you, crazy? What? It's Mike. Hey, Chris Russell pretty much only eats tacos. Isn't it taco? Yeah. Oh, I see what's going on here. <laughs> yes, I see. I was like, what is that? Really? Is that a thing? Uh, Grey Poupon will be fine. There we thank you. I, anything for you. Uh, yeah, pardon me. It's always taco time. Yes, that's right. Do you have any that? Mm. Do you have any Grey Poupon? Uh, I can see Chris making lots of pardon me references <laughs> when the mustard comes out. He does. Uh, yeah. Now everybody's freaking out now. Like my fancy mentions tacos with mayonnaise on. It's like what? What the hell? Pardon me. That's all right. George is getting upset. <laughs> I don't like that. It seems wrong, but no. And then so Chris and Mike had to put every. It's just teasing him. Whoa! Nobody, whoa! Easy. <laughs> Nobody puts mayonnaise in their tacos. I hope. Yeah, Mike says I'm mostly here just to get people wound up. <laughs> okay, now fish taco. Fine, fish tacos with a spicy mayo or shrimp tacos. Yeah, there's a spicy sauce. Fine. Okay, but shrimp tacos are amazing. Yeah, I do like I like shrimp tacos and. Uh... Hot and too cold. There's all kinds of cool warnings in Marlin now. That's awesome. <laughs> yep, Sergio even had to chime in. Mayo in your taco is a sin. <laughs> I think aioli. Got... It's evolved. <laughs> <laughs> Chris says, uh, we don't call it mayo anymore. It's evolved to aioli sauce. Yes, it's an aioli. Somebody called me an aioli once. <laughs> what did I have? Oh, you know what? The last time we did the uh, roast beef, sand uh, the what we had for dinner the other night, uh -huh. the Italian beef sandwiches, uh, I made a garlic aioli, and it was really good, and I forgot to make it this time. Just fine without it. Yeah. Are you are you really using a sample coil? I had to do the cough gag sound effect for you, Tom. I've sample used, coil. I've used this same mm. sample like for over a year now. And I've I've used probably like a foot of it so far just to test different things. Uh Getting ready to build MKS Skipper motherboards into three anacubic megas. What and where do you get the connector kits? I find a lot on Amazon, but it would like a better bulk supply. Skipper motherboards, three anacubic connector kit. Um. Yeah, really. The so you're talking about making your own connectors. I just buy stuff through Amazon. I'm sure you go to like DigiKey and get stuff bulk uh but it's all it's so much more expensive to do it that way um you could get on like aliexpress if you had a couple of weeks to wait you could buy serious bulk through them and it would be the same thing and quite a bit cheaper i would guess but uh it extrudes plastic we did it it's Yay. officially a 3d oh, printer it's doing it well now what mm. Andrew Rogers is sad because they don't do fish tacos here in the South. It's killing his inner Southern California native. Yeah. You're going to have, oh, and Chris says, we're just going to have to fix that. <laughs> I agree. Make it happen. We did it. Benchy test. I'm, I'm, uh, there's still <laughs> quite a few things until we print, like first layer and all that. Um, and we could do all that on a stream if we wanted to. We could just get the initial setup done. 
Somebody's at bed level. Everybody wants a benchy. We could let it run the level sequence. We could do that real fast. There you go. Go ahead. Mayo sub for sour cream? No. Could say no. Uh, did you set your probe offsets? No, I did not. Steve, thank you for reminding me, though. Chris says, once I get to Nashville, all kinds of mayhem will start. They're going to kick you out. They're going to kick you out of Nashville. Kick you out of Nashville? We're being... We're being one of them California boys. That's exactly what's happening. Uh, why not? Oh, well, it did still trigger. Barely made it over there. Keith, do you happen to know? Oh, he's already got it in the chat. I don't even have to ask. He just. 23 and 5. <laughs> Mad Cat wants to know what's wrong with California. Nothing. Absolutely nothing is wrong with California boys. <laughs> I don't know how they're going to feel about them in Nashville. That's all. With your fish tacos. Uh, <laughs> nothing at all. Uh,. I've been banned from worse places than Nashville. <laughs> Good. I've been kicked out of better clubs than this. <laughs> uh... Oh, couldn't hit the... Oh, no, it just it completed. So it did level the bed. That's good. Yeah. It would probably print if I... Uh want to do a lot of messing with the first layer. When you did your silicone bed mod, how did you do it? Did you measure the thickness of the center spacer and then measure the spots where the silicone goes? I haven't done any of that yet, and it still has to be done. Uh, I just tried to get them somewhat equal so it would lay semi-flat. I usually just put it in, um, like we'll hook it up to front interface and look at the map and then make some adjustments. Maybe that's what we should do. We'll do all of that. We'll have a first print stream because there's all that kinds of odds and ends that we could do, uh, you know, with everyone here on the stream. Probably want to enable baby, baby stepping and baby step Z probe offset. Absolutely. But it's going to be really hard for me to wait two weeks to do all of that stuff because this is kind of my favorite part. <laughs> but, well, you can't do it without them. I know, but I think that's that's what we'll do. We're right at we're almost at two and a half hours. It prints. It's together. A little, how about just a little more clapping for for the, for the bill? Um, everything's working though. It's a good looking machine. I have to fix the clip for the main board. I will do that in between now and next time we do stuff. And then we'll go through all of the setup stuff. We'll get the bed. We'll get the silicone spacers tied down. We'll get the bed level. We'll do the offsets, adjust the first layer, and then we will be printing benchies like nobody's business. Yay. It's going to be great. There you go. Um, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Proner face. Are you going to use proner face? Yeah, it's the easiest one for me anyway. Good. Yeah. Uh, somebody says, at Practical Printing, uh nashville hot chicken. enjoy the nice nashville <laughs> hot chicken tacos then uh i when i was in nashville i had hot chicken and waffles and it was really good it surprised me i didn't think i was gonna like it and i really really enjoyed it so have some hot chicken and waffles uh all righty thank you everybody thank you this has been yeah. a long build what it took three months Gee. but you got it and you were prepared and we you knocked it out. I didn't I mean, have to do a lot of running around for parts today. That was nice. So now we're going to do make make these first print tunings a video. Then people can reference it in the future. That's a good idea, Bob. I can do that. 
Yeah. And there we go. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Uh, thanks for all the super chat tips and all the support. We really appreciate it. That keeps us going, keeps us in roast beef sandwiches and bougie coffee, as yeah. Andrew likes to say. Uh, thanks for everybody that joins these things. We enjoy doing them every two weeks. Uh, it wouldn't be much of a stream without you all. It would be just us standing down here for some reason looking at each other. So that's always good that you show up. We like that. Yes, thank you. Good so, night. Yeah, everybody have a rest, good rest of the weekend. Happy Easter tomorrow if you're doing that kind of thing. Uh, we will see you in two weeks. All right. Enjoy your long mass, Sergio. Uh, yeah. and good night, John. And good night. Glenn Hogue, if you're still listening, good night. Good night, John Boy. Have a good day. Good weekend. Happy Easter. <laughs> Eat. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Eat food. Snack a lot. Snacks. <laughs> all right. We'll, we'll see you all really soon.